this is how this is gonna work. I have a canned margarita. I have my favorite tequila. Here are the rules. Take a sip every time Mal gets in a fight. Take a shot when someone kisses. Finish your drink when the Darkling says, fine, make me your villain. Take a shot when someone says, no mourners or funerals. Take a sip when Zoya is a Take a sip when Alina cries. Take a shot every time someone doesn't kiss but you want them to. Take a shot when the Darkling's real name is revealed. Take a shot anytime someone gets waxed by a cane. And take a sip when Jesper twirls his guns. I'm Annabelle. Clearly I've been obsessed with Shadow and Bone ever since it came out. I had never read the books. I binged the, the series in one day um, and then immediately ordered all the books. So at this point, I've already seen the show. I read the Grisha trilogy, so the first three books in the Grisha verse. And then I went back and watched Shadow and Bone again. So I've already seen the show twice, but I'm gonna play this drinking game because um, I love the show. Gotta do my part to keep it in the top 10. I want a season two so bad. So uh, I'm gonna watch it again. The plan is to play this drinking game while I'm watching episode one, then take a break. Probably by then I'm tipsy, so I'm gonna do my book review for Shadow and Bone, the first book in the trilogy. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it is like 8.30 right now, I'm stone cold sober, and let's get it started. Mal can make rabbits out of frogs. Oh my god, they already established this when he's a little tiny baby Mal. Um, and then, okay, also, um, they have this fighting scene, very first episode, very first season, but Mal doesn't become like a crazy self destructive fighter until what, like Ruin and Rising? And he's like, I am become a blade. Like, he wasn't always this like macho man, he was just like a little traffic guy. Anyways, I appreciate it because it's hot. Oh, that's a gun for Sip. Hey, what, what are you doing? Get Love out you, of you Jasper. Also, Kez hit the table with his cane. Does that count as someone getting whacked with a cane? It's early, so I'm going to count it. I like it nerves the night before. I like to have a good tumble with a stranger. But it's my head. Drink. I'm sorry. That's my remedy. That's my man. That's Alina's man. No. Christian. You seem like the type he does. Right, like, you better go, Mal. Leave. Mal just said, I found you. She said, You always do somehow. Ruin and rising? Foreshadowing? Spoiler alert. I'm already tipsy. This is too much. I'll find my way back to you. That's a shot, because they didn't kiss and they should have. Is it a shot? Yes. <laughs> okay, also, tumble? That's how you know it's YA. What the f tumble? Y'all Okay. I don't think it was a cane, but I think it counts. So, you know who I am. one instruction okay pause because also about the show it's Alina's fault that everyone on the sand skiff dies like 
the, cartog the cartographers were not even going to be there until Alina set fire to the maps and they all got assigned to go on the sand skip. Okay, and that's never addressed, right? It's never addressed that she's the reason literally everyone died. That's never addressed again. Meanwhile, in the books, after the first book, Shadow and Bone, when she leaves people in the fold to die in the dark, in Siege and Storm, she's like completely traumatized by that and like so guilty that she left a crew of people in the fold. When really, in that situation, it wasn't even her fault, really. She was just trying to get out of there. Like, so I have a little bone to pick with that, but. So technically, Mal is in a fight, right? Against the Volcra. looking for excuses to drink at this point. Also, Alina is being a baby. That's a drink. I know I could cry earlier, but... Finally! She gets some guts and actually does something. So that was the end of episode one. I am tipsy, but I didn't have dinner, so I'm feeling it. I'm gonna grab the book and we're gonna chat. Shadow and Bone. I'm completely obsessed. Like I said, I did watch the show first, so I had already an idea of the characters, right? So I was already a Malina stan, like I ship them so hard because Mal, Archie Renault is so attractive um, and they have really good chemistry. Obviously, <laughs> obviously she has great chemistry with Ben Barnes too, um, the Darkling, but from the book, I don't see how everyone is the Dark Lena fan shipper. Like what? In the book, there's like hardly any Dark Lena stuff. Like, okay, well, in this book, okay, we'll get to the next one later. Um, yeah. So even in this book, a totally Malina forever OTP. Not really. Anyways, <laughs> what did I like about this book? This book I also read in a day and it's like what 350 pages really easy to get into for YA it didn't it wasn't too young for me I'm 26 so it wasn't like weird to read um I was telling a friend the other day I like fantasy YA because it's not like they're in high school making high school decisions they're like in a war so it feels less weird to read about teenagers if they're in a war you know what I mean in the book they do a really or she Lee <laughs> Lee Bardugo does a great job of obviously it's a book so it's like easier to get inside Alina's head it's from Alina's point of view so it's like I see a lot of criticism that like Alina's annoying or whatever I don't I don't think so I think she's like totally valid like she is a teenager who is an orphan who doesn't know where she belongs in the world for all sorts of reasons right which comes through a, a lot in the book because you have her thoughts what I thought they did really well in the show they made that like more visually apparent because of her like race like she's part shoe whatever in the show so like they made that more like just like physically uh apparent um which i think is smart for a show because we're not in her head the whole time i thought they did a good job of doing of translating like internal dialogue to the screen in that sense what even happens in this book i forgot because i've watched the show twice now let me just take a moment okay so in the book which i see why now maybe why people say alina's annoying 
In the book, she like does not get along with other girls. Uh, no one likes that kind of girl, okay? Everyone has girlfriends. If you don't get along with other girls, it's really annoying. So it is annoying that she just she's not friends with any of the other Grisha once she makes it to the little palace, Marie and Nadia. So I'm glad they did change that in the book. It seems like, I mean, in the show, it seems like a more genuine friendship in the show. So that's good because everybody needs a girlfriend. In the book, Jenya and Alina's relationship is way more in depth. I don't know. Because, okay, also in a TV show, you have to move really quickly, right? There, She like barely spends any time training with Botkin. She barely spends any time in the little palace before the world is ending, whatever. Anyways, so in the book, you get a lot more of that. She's like weeks, months, days at the little palace and with Jenya. So that relationship is a lot more believable in the book. Um, I love Jenya, oh my freaking gosh. We'll get into that in the next books. Something that I'm glad they did in the show, in this book, it literally takes them weeks to get anywhere by horseback. Ugh, boring, literally half the book is, <laughs> okay, not half. I love this book, I love you, Lee, okay? But literally like a quarter of this book is them traveling on horseback. That's all they do is ride on horseback. So I'm glad in the show it was like, zoop, they were done. <laughs> that was too much. I feel like I'm sobering up, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Okay, this is my journal. I wrote some quotes in it, so I'm just gonna read my favorite quotes because <laughs> they're amazing. This is the bonus content in the novel, but we get a lot of it as voiceover in the show. Um, it's Mal's letter to Alina, where he's just like, they're, when they're separated, when she's at the little palace and he's who knows where. I feel every empty hollow in myself and the wind just blows through. I feel how flimsy I am, how all the things I thought were strong and whole were just held together by you. Oh my God. I was literally, I was literally screaming when I read this. That's my cat. When I was reading this, I was like sobbing out loud and he was like, what's wrong with you? They were just held together by you. How can you not be a Melina stan? This is Alina thinking about the Darkling. The truth that was the dead and empty space between the stars. Come on, Lee. What the heck? The truth that was the dead and empty space between the stars? Literally, who writes about the space between the stars? I've never heard that before. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Oh my God. Everyone talks about, oh, the stars in the sky are so beautiful. Literally the first time I ever read someone talk about the empty space between the stars. Oh, my heart. God, I love you, Lee Bardugo. <sighs> okay, and the last quote I'm going to read for you. Uh, Mal is in the jail cell right before they have to go through the fold with the darkling. I love you, Alina. Even the part of you that loved him. I'm so alone.